What is going on guys? My name is Kyle and today I am back with another video. I'm gonna be walking you through my budget camera bag. Um, so let's get right into the video. All right, so like I said earlier, we're gonna be walking you through my camera bag. I know there's hundreds, if not thousands of videos on YouTube about this, but I wanna do a budget version. I wanted to kind of do a budget kind of camera bag version for all the people that are maybe looking to get into photography and kind of showing that yes, it is a very expensive hobby as well as an expensive career, but you don't necessarily need to spend your whole savings on camera gear to become a photographer as well as learn about photography in general. So I've done photography kind of semi-professionally. Um, it started as a hobby, it started as an interest. I just picked up my you know, family camera and started taking pictures and fell in love. And I'll be showing my kind of first camera as well a little later on. But I've done it for mainly the automotive industry. So I've worked at kind of two dealerships now. Uh, I worked at Mercedes-Benz as well as kind of overall exotic dealership um, that did Lamborghini, Aston Martin, uh, Rolls Royce, as well as Bentley, and a ton of other used kind of consignment vehicles. Um, I've done Jaguar, I've done BMW, I've done obviously Mercedes, I've done uh, Ferrari as well, I've done Audi, I've done any car that you can imagine or think of, I've probably driven or taken pictures of. Um, I did the inventory, so like stuff you see on the website, as well as marketing material, going to events. Um, different things for social media um, and as well as I've done like kind of portrait sessions family sessions um, as well as some real estate a little bit as well so I've had my experience in kind of the more semi-professional I wouldn't like to call myself professional yet but I definitely have done some more professional kind of semi-professional work um, with some clients obviously the first most important thing of your camera bag is the camera bag you know the thing that is actually holding all of your equipment i've had this now for about gosh three to five years um and obviously down the road i'll do some updated versions of my maybe more expensive versions not the budget version and obviously i'm looking into different bags um so watch out for those videos in the future um but starting off with the bag this is an older version throughout the video i'll go ahead and link all the products down in the description below um, as well as the price kind of popping up somewhere on the screen. Um, and I'll just do the latest version. Like I said, this is probably older. They probably have a different version by now. Um, this is by Low Pro. So I'll just go ahead and link the newest version down below. So this is the Low Pro Transit Backpack. It's their uh, 350 AW. Um, so they have different sizing and stuff like that. But kind of looks more like a hard shell backpack. Um, so it's got this main kind of smaller pocket. Obviously I'll be having B-roll roll throughout the video, but you have one exterior kind of little pocket um, I just put like different knickknacks and stuff like that, as well as this back kind of laptop pocket that obviously holds, I think, I don't know if this holds a 15 inch, it might hold only up to a 13 inch, um, you know, computer. So I have my MacBook Pro in here, which I used to edit on. And then now mainly, uh, which I'll show you earlier, if you haven't seen that video, um, I have a custom PC that I'm editing on now. I'll go ahead and link the video on the top right or left of the screen. Um, so go ahead and check that out. But overall, this has been a great bag. It's held up. There's maybe like a few puncture holes or wear and tear throughout the whole bag, but it's just great. You kind of sling it to your side and they have this little kind of side access part. So you can kind of put um, maybe before a shoot, put your body and one lens on, put this in here and then you kind of slide it to your side, take one of the straps um, off your shoulders and then just unzip it with kind of one hand, it takes two really, and then you kind of pull your, your kind of setup for the day out and then zip it back up. So that's a really cool feature. Um, I've seen a lot where like Peak Design has that. You have access to both sides that you can kind of unzip so you don't have to take your whole backpack off. So I've used that here and there, um, depending on the actual shoot. A lot of times I'm just setting my camera bag down and taking out the equipment that I need. But overall, great bag. They have got a rain cover on the bottom that is kind of concealed, as well as kind of uh, these straps on the side for like your tripod and whatever accessories you want to carry that are a little bit longer. You have that availability on the side here. All right, so first I want to start off with uh, my first baby. This was my first camera ever, the first camera I ever bought. And I just kind of wanted to include this. It's obviously not in my bag. 
bag all the time. But just kind of for memory's sake, I'm obviously gonna keep this. And I wanted to kind of show this because you don't really need, and which I'll get to later, how much I spent on my new baby, which is the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV, which I'm recording on right now. But you don't necessarily need a lot of money to get into photography. When I bought this, this was about, I think $500, I could be wrong. Um, and obviously, like I said, I'll link down below all the newest versions of these products. Um, I think it's probably like the T8 or 9 by now. Um, so they either have like the T3 or the T3i. Under $1,000, a lot of times they come with like little kits. So you can get like a lot of different lenses and a whole package, which is great. You usually get like an 18 to 35 or 18 to 55, sorry, um, kind of kit lens. Uh, sometimes they'll give you like a zoom lens. Um, or maybe even like a prime lens. There's a lot of packages out there and it's just a great way for you to learn. A lot of these have the manual mode, they have aperture priority as well as shutter speed priority. So AV, TV, um, as well as P mode, uh, which is priority mode. Um, but just learning about, you know, ISO, your white balance and using, getting yourself to a point where you can use manual and then you go up to the point of the big boy um, which is the 5Ds, the 1Ds, even going to mirrorless, the R5, R6, stuff like that. Obviously, you don't want to spend $3,000 on a camera when you don't know anything about photography. Um, stuff like this and, and, and gear like this that is really cheap is a great way to get into photography. So obviously, I'm recording on my current new baby, which is the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. This is a little more expensive. I got it on sale for, I think, 21 or 2200 obviously with all the taxes and stuff after that but i think right now it's going for about twenty five hundred dollars it's a little more expensive someone that's getting into photography is not willing to spend that amount of money um you know so this is something that i've obviously i've been doing photography and this is an upgrade for me i'm really genuinely getting into more of the professional side of photography i love this camera this camera is great um, a lot of people say it's outdated, it's older, the sensor's older than a lot of the mirrorless cameras, but you're gonna see a lot of professional photographers using this camera. I've used it for a lot of shoots, a lot of different work, and I absolutely love it. Um, I probably can do a full video on this actual camera. Um, and if you wanna see that, leave some comments down below. This camera's great, it's in the 30 megapixel range. It's got, I think, seven or eight FPS of frames per second. Great 4K video all the great stuff, not the newest sensor um, or the newest processor, um, but it's great for what it does. It's an awesome camera. It's the newest of the 5D kind of lineup, but overall a great camera. So let's go ahead and get to lenses and another lens that is on the camera and all this B-roll will show you kind of in depth all these different products, but I have on my camera right now, the 17 to 40 millimeter um, lens by Canon. So this is a overall great lens. I think at the time I paid $800. I think it's about the same price now. I think they have a Mark II version by now. And by the way, for lenses, it's okay sometimes to buy the older version, used versions compared to the new one. Camera bodies, you wanna be a little more careful because you've got shutter count. But you know, for lenses, it's okay to buy used, um, but the 17 to 40 is great for video. Um, great for landscapes, getting that kind of wide angle. Um, it goes to, I think about four, 4.5. Don't quote me on that. Um, so not a super low aperture, but when you're doing landscapes and stuff like that, you don't necessarily need a low aperture. You want more of a high, kind of 11, 12, even up to 18 if you're doing like night photography, stuff like that. Overall, great lens. I use it all the time. One of my big first purchases um, of photography, $800 at the time was like, that's a lot. I was going through community college. It was a lot of money, um, but right now it's like comparative. You look at like the 16 to 35 millimeter and that's like over a thousand dollars. Um, so this is a great kind of budget option um, for a wide angle lens. So then we go ahead and move into the next option. And I'm sure you've seen the big boy, the, the kind of wildlife um, looking lens, which is a little more kind of, it's like a beige color, obviously a lot bigger um, kind of lens and longer. Um, but this is a nice budget version. I don't know the exact price, but I'll go ahead and leave it on the screen. The newest version. A lot of times you'll find these in kits and stuff, but this works great for me. Um, it's got a four to 5.6 aperture, which is not the greatest. I would love to have a little bit lower, um, but this is a 75 to 300 millimeter. So you're gonna get a great kind of depth. It's not fixed on 300 millimeter. Um, so you kind of have that nice variety going from 75 to 300 and you're not going to break the bank with this. This is definitely not under a thousand. I know that I just don't know the exact price, but this is definitely a great option to have in your bag. If you're interested to in get into sports or wildlife or anything like that, 
Um, this is just a great option. You could probably even use this. It's not an 85 prime. You probably could put it on that and use it for portraits if you want to. But like I said, not the lowest aperture, but definitely a great overall option. I've had this for years and years now, and it's still amazing quality, not even any you know nicks or scratches or anything like that. And then to go along with all this, um, kind of some really cool little accessories uh, are what they call lens hoods. Um, so I have one for my 75 to 300 millimeter, and then I have one for my 17 to 40 millimeter. Um, this actually comes with it. Um, it's, it's actual Canon brand. It comes with it when you buy it. When you start to spend a little more money, it actually comes with your lens. Um, whereas this is, I believe, from uh, Pro Master, and it obviously works based off. Every lens has kind of a diameter. It's like this one's 58 millimeter. Um, my 17 to 40 is a 77 millimeter, and they're super cheap. They're great for you know getting out like sunspots or sun flares, anything like that, as well as just protecting your lens. And obviously, you have either the flower version or kind of the actual just lens hood. Um, and this is for wide angle because if you put this on a wide angle, you're going to start to see the lens hood. Um, so those are kind of cool little accessories that are super cheap. Then we get into what a lot of people call the 50 nifty. And this is the Canon. Uh, all of my lenses are pretty much Canon. This is the Canon 50 millimeter lens 1.8 version. I think they have like the Mark II and they go all the way down to 1.4 on the aperture. Um, but overall, a must need in your bag. Um, prime lenses are always great to have. The most popular ones that you're going to see are 35, 50, and 85, especially for portraits and stuff like that when you get into like L series glass. Um, but they say like prime lenses are a little higher quality. I just love the 50 millimeter because I think it's a great way if you're getting into photography to learn how to move around your subject and not always just move your subject. So it teaches you to get different angles, get different kind of, um, you know, depths from your actual subject. And it really teaches you of how to move around your subject, um, you know, obviously because you can't zoom in and out on something that is fixed at 50 millimeters or 85 or 35 um, and even goes down to like 24 or 16 but definitely great addition like 130 something dollars i'll have the price exact on the screen great option to have in your bag a must need um, from any of those three options either like a 35 or an 85 um, and i'll link those down below as well so then we kind of get into like the actual accessory portion of my camera bag so things that go on top like flash or um, things that are plugged into the actual camera um, and then things like batteries. So obviously I have a battery in my camera. Um, you know, you can start out with one, but obviously as you get to more like kind of professional work, you're gonna want more batteries and they have really cool kind of like little sacks that you can put um, all of your batteries in and kind of keep them all in one place. So that's definitely something that you just wanna over time accumulate more batteries. You get to a point where you can never have enough. Um, so that's definitely, obviously when you buy a camera, it comes with one, but they're not they're not super cheap. They're not super expensive. And there's some brands like Manfrotto that sell like cheaper versions of batteries. But a lot of time you're just gonna buy it directly from Canon, the actual Canon brand. So obviously along with it, you have like a charger. I plan on upgrading Manfrotto has like a dual charger system, which I think would be really efficient um, but obviously you're gonna have a charger in your bag and then something that i kind of made more recent um, kind of purchase when i was working at the exotic dealership and i was doing a lot more events um, i went ahead and i invested in a flash so an external flash this is going to be the canon 470 ex ai this is our speed light this is something that just it came to a point where I needed it. I was doing a lot more events than when I started um, working with the dealership. Um, so this made a lot of sense. If you do a lot of different events, weddings, things that are indoor as well as outdoor as well, studio work, this is definitely something that you might wanna look into. Um, they have a bunch of different brands, but I was doing research. They said it's the best usually to go with the actual camera brand that you're using. It's just a little bit better quality. Um, and then it comes with a diffuser as well. You kind of put on here so that, you know the light isn't as harsh. Um, so you have that option as well. And a nice little carrying case. I think this is about $300 um, when I had purchased it. So not too expensive. And like I said, if you're learning how to do photography right away, you're not necessarily gonna purchase something like this. But in the scheme of how you know expensive things are in photography, this is a little bit on the cheaper end um, and definitely a great option. A lot of great features. I probably should do a full video on this. There's some really cool features with like um, kind of auto positioning. That's the AI kind of on the actual title or the name of the product. 
um, it positions it automatically. You don't have to choose. Um, so I might do a full video on that. So look out for that in the future. So that is all in the actual kind of uh, main compartment of my bag, as you can see on the bottom. Um, so now we get into more of the accessories. So then you get into more things like um, kind of, you know, shutter releases. This is a wired version. They have remote ones as well. Just look on Amazon, B&H, Best Buy, you know, don't spend too much money. Obviously you can get into like a lot more expensive when you have like, you know, further range options and stuff like that. Um, but definitely great if you're doing like landscapes or night photography. This is a great kind of option to have. If you're doing like light painting and stuff like that at night, which is why I always carry a flashlight. If you're out at night, it's great for that as well as light painting. You can kind of use things like these, but this is great option to kind of shutter release. You just push down, put up. Um, if you're doing like, you know, longer than a 30 second exposure, um, this is a great option to have, super cheap, um, as well as a flashlight. You can pick this up pretty much anywhere. Then we get into the actual kind of uh, what I use on majority of my shoots. So this is FO Tassi or Fotassi. Um, it's a quick strap, so it goes right over your shoulder. Um, I really like this one because it kind of has a great padding. Um, sometimes you just find the ones that are just like mainly straps. This has great cushioning and then has this kind of little kind of goes under your armpit and locks in there really nicely. And then just this just screws to the bottom of your camera. And this is great. Uh, they call these kind of slings. So you just throw this over your shoulder. Um, a lot of times you see double ones like, you know, wedding photographers and it just sits there. So you don't have to hold it in your hand the whole time. It just sits on your kind of hip side and you're able to kind of just sling it in front, take a picture, sling it back down if you need to use your hands to direct or, you know, do anything else. Um, this is just definitely a great option to have. In the sense of uh, like a tripod, I'm using one right now. So I'll have some B-roll of that. Um, I believe I have a sum packed and it'll, the price will be on the screen. Link will be down below. Um, and I'll probably put up the actual whole full brand name um, since I don't know it right now. But I use a Sunpack tripod. It's great. Um, I, don't, I don't know the actual inches that it goes up. It has some carbon fiber here on the bottom. Um, but it's just overall great. It goes super low. You kind of have these releases. Um, obviously, I'm pointing to something you can't see. Um, but they have these cool releases. So if you're getting like a low shot at like the beach um, with kind of that silky smooth water, you can put the legs all the way down and the camera gets like maybe a foot above the ground. Overall, a great um, kind of tripod. It wasn't too expensive. Like I said, I'll have the price on the screen. It comes with like a carrying case, um, a super compact, um, maybe a little bigger. I've seen some like tripods that compact pretty small, like Peak Design has one. Uh, but overall, it works great for photography as well as video. Then we get into, which is an absolute kind of necessity, how you clean your actual gear. I have a whole kind of lens kit here. Um, so I have one for the actual filters, lenses, as well as the kind of uh, micro tool. So you can use it for like um, the little eyepiece that you actually look into, your screen, like your LCD screen. Definitely great to have. This is by Lens Pen. Um, it's just a DSLR Pro kit. And then the actual carrying case is really nice. It's actually microfiber. So you can use to clean kind of your screen, stuff like that. This is definitely something that you're gonna need in your bag. Super cheap option. You don't need to spend a lot of money. And then moving into the next option, um, which is, or you can have both, honestly. Um, they have ones you can actually buy. It's like an actual rocket. I'm sure you've seen it. Um, but this is just for air. So if you have like little hairs, um, little kind of dust particles on your lens. You can just kind of use this really quick. You're probably looking at this and seeing, well, what is this? Um, this is for babies. This is like an ear cleaner. It's super cheap. You can go at Walgreens, CVS, any of those, like a couple dollars. Um, and it works great. You just kind of, you know, squeeze it for any, like little, like I said, little hairs, little kind of dust particles and kind of get that off the lens. Um, you don't have to pay like, I don't know what the rocket ones are. Those are kind of cheap too. If you're wanting to save a lot of money, you can just pick up one of these. It's like a little baby kind of ear cleaner, just kind of look for one of those um, super cheap options. Then obviously you get into things like this. Um, this is just one of my, kind of my filters that I have. Um, and then this is one for my 17 to 40. Um, so obviously a little bigger, like I said, it depends on what your um, kind of diameter of your lens is. So like this one is for, like I said, my 17 to 40. This is going to be a ND filter. Uh, I forget the brand, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, but this is a great option if you're doing like landscapes, um, if you wanna do like those silky kind of smooth um, kind of water pictures, you can use these for videos as well. Um, this is a higher stop. So I think this is like 10 stops. Um, so you might not wanna use that for a video. 
Uh, this is great if you're trying to get that silky smooth kind of ocean look. You're trying to get like that silky smooth like when you're taking ocean shots. This is a great option to have. They have circular polarizer lenses, uh, ND filters, all that kind of stuff. They can get a little pricey. This one wasn't super expensive. I was like $60, $70. You know, they go all the way up to like 100, 200. These are the ones that actually screw onto your lens itself. Um, a lot of the more professional grade ones are like a whole kit that goes around your lens and like you slide like a glass plate in. You're gonna spend a lot more money for that. There's a lot of better, cheaper options that they're coming out with that just screw right on your lens. Um, even things like, you know, the CPLs, they act as like protection to your lens. Um, so it's kind of like a double whammy. You get two things out of it. You get a filter and then you get protection as well. Then we get, I just have another little strap here. Um, this one's by Case Logic. I'm sure you've heard of this brand. Um, this is like a hand strap. Um, so it straps to the right side of your camera, obviously what you would be shooting on. Um, and this is really nice if I'm doing like some portrait sessions or stuff like that, or just kind of going on adventures and shooting. Um, I like to just put this on my hand. I can kind of put it to the side. I don't necessarily have to worry about like gripping it um, I can kind of just let it loose in my hand and the strap just kind of holds it um, super nice nice to have nice cushioning um, so that's kind of another strap that I have then you get into really cool things um, like peak design offers their kind of uh, clip um, so this clips onto your backpack strap your um, kind of uh, like your belt um, and this is really cool to have I haven't used it too much obviously with you know, with the pandemic and everything going on. Um, but before I was using this at the dealership to kind of just put on my belt and then you just kind of clip your camera into it. And then it has like a little bracket and plate that you screw onto the bottom of your camera. Definitely really cool. Um, their products aren't the cheapest. This is pretty expensive. I think it's like 50, $60. Um, obviously I'll put all the prices kind of redundant at this point. Um, but I just wanna let you know what these prices are. Um, Peak Design can get a little more expensive. Their backpacks are expensive, but definitely really cool, especially for like your, if you just don't wanna put it in and out of your bag, you can kind of just put this on the actual strap of your backpack and you take it and just click it right on. Super quick kind of release button. Um, really cool if you're willing to spend a little more money um, and you've got all your gear and you just want like kind of cool accessories that help you out. Um, they have like lens attachments that are really cool. So like if you're doing weddings um, and if you want like another lens and then you have your actual full setup, you can just like quickly replace it. Really cool stuff. Peak Design, great brand, great quality. Comes with like a cool little carrying case. Uh, that's kind of just like a little cool accessory if you have a little more money to spend. Um, definitely would check that out. Then just kind of some miscellaneous things in my bag. Um, like batteries are always great to have, especially... Um, if you have like a battery grip or like my flash takes um, double A's. So I always carry like a fresh set of batteries. Um, so I'll have the batteries that are in the actual flash and then a backup set as well. Um, so that's always in my bag. Um, and then obviously things like, you know, kind of microfiber towels, stuff like that. You always want to be able to clean um, kind of your lenses, your LCD screen, all of that. And then lastly, um, for the actual kind of camera stuff. I have uh, by Pelican, it's a SD card kind of holder. Um, so you have all of your kind of slots in here um, and it's super nice kind of almost felt material, I guess is what you would call it. And obviously you need something to carry your SD cards. You don't just want to have throw them in your bag. They're very sensitive um, and they have, you want to just take very good care um, of all your cards because you don't want to do a whole shoot and then find out you damage your SD card. Um, so having something like this, Pelican's a great brand. Um, it just latches in there like that um, and super compact, super great. Um, it's double sided. So even if you wanted to categorize this to like empty um, and full, um, or if you want to buy two of these, they're not too expensive. Um, you can buy like two and then write like full and empty on another one. Um, definitely something I would recommend getting for not too much. Then we get into my kind of mobile editing station. I edit on this for the longest time. Um, this is, I think at the time, 1200, but you're gonna need something to edit on and you're gonna need something that's powerful with kind of a lot of RAM um, or a decent amount of RAM to kind of keep up with all the programs that you're gonna be running. But this is what I edited on. I still kind of edit on this and manage storage and stuff like that. 
as well as now I'm editing on my custom PC. So that has been my whole kind of budget camera bag tour. I really just wanted to give this for all the people that are looking to get into photography and really just show you that it doesn't cost too much. Certain things like my 5D are gonna cost a little more. Um, but like I said, you, you can get like a T, whatever the newest version is, their T lineup, spend less than a thousand dollars, get a whole kit, just learn about photography. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars, spend your whole savings account. Just learn about photography because it's a great hobby. And eventually if you want to, it's a great career as well to get into um, and just really get into your creative side. I go to my whole new kind of whole, my whole little world when I'm doing photography. Um, and just exploring, but I hope you enjoyed, um, you know, hopefully this entices you to go out and, and not be so scared of photography and all the things you hear of how expensive it is. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So if you like the video, go ahead and leave a like down below. It really helps me out. Leave comments down below as well. I read all of them. I reply to all of them. I am here for what you have to say. Subscribe, it helps me know that I'm doing the right thing and I'm going the right direction. But like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the full tour. I'll obviously be doing updated versions of these throughout my career and throughout my YouTube career as well. So look out for those. Links will all be down in the description. Um, comment, say, hey, what's going on? But this has been the full video of my budget camera bag tour, and I'll see you in the next one.